Commander's Personal Log, 242.7, Standard Republic Time. Exploration of this system is being hampered by severe gravimetric storms which are interfering with the magnetic fields in our power distribution grid. We've already lost two of our four batteries, and I fear we may have to abandon our exploration of this system. Switching to battery three. Course correction, bearing two degrees to port. Well, it's little wonder the Empire never claimed this system. Commander, the gas giant appears to be the source of the magnetic interference. Agreed. This whole system is in flux, and has been for some time. I really don't think we're going to find anything that would be worth the risk of coming back here. Commander, this is the engineering deck. We've lost containment of plasma reaction chamber 3. Emergency protocol 1 now in effect. Acknowledged. Can you contain the breach? I'm afraid we have no viable options. Containment field is barely holding. I hear you, Sardik. Helm, I'll stop. Fire forward thrusters. Back us off. Damage to Section 2. Fire Suppression System offline. Containment field has just collapsed. I'm evacuating all personnel to the upper decks. Including yourself, I assume. Negative, Commander. I can buy you some time. Please make good use of it. Transmit the stress signal on all frequencies. There might be someone who'll hear it. Incoming message. On speakers. RSS Tigra, this is the Federation Starship USS Horizon. We've received your emergency hail. We need to get your current location. They're breaking up. Commander, I regret to inform you that the option to eject the core is no longer available. Set course, bearing 24, Mark 7, full speed. We're not going to make it. Then we must hope for the impossible. Is the Horizon the only ship in the area? Yes, Commander, but they're too far away to help us. Our integrity has dropped to 50%. We're going to lose the ship. Magnetic field collapse. Singularity meltdown in progress. Core breach in 30 seconds. All stop. 
Initial scan shows the volume of debris ahead, is likely consistent with a scout size vessel. Broad sensor sweep, reads debris of mostly tetraburnium and electro-ceramic plating. They're all charred by plasma fire. There's also what appears to be, a NIDA-style singularity reactor. Sounds old. Probably early 24th century. So there'll be no lifeboats then? According to the rate of debris expansion, this happened within the last hour. It's the Romulan ship, for sure. Magnify. Sensors read no life signs. There would have probably been around 20 or 30 crew aboard. I'll gather an investigation team. We'll hold position here. Tell the Republic that Horizon is at its disposal. Warp speed would have been too risky. Only an Andorian escort, at full impulse, would have made it here in time. The age of this ship, was simply not a factor. And main engineering reports all said light propulsion was operating above specification. I was pretty sure that was the case, but I really needed it confirmed. Thank you. Surely they wouldn't use it against you. Are they really so desperate to decommission this ship? I'm afraid so. Captain, we have an incoming transmission from New Romulus. Can you put it through, please? The signal's a bit wonky at times, but it seems clear enough. Proconsul? Captain, it's good to see you. I do wish it were under better circumstances. I don't doubt you and your crew made every effort, as you always do. Sadly we weren't fast enough to save the ship. What you've done for me, and my people, could never be expressed in words, or in action. You gave us hope, you helped secure our new home. It was our pleasure. But is there anything we can do to help you now? The Harfei is en route to your position. If you could meet her and guide her to the site, it would be very helpful. We'll be happy to assist. Likewise Captain, if there's anything I can do in return, let me know. I'm very grateful, thank you. But please don't concern yourself on our account. News of this disaster is already beginning to spread. Today is a day of great sorrow, and will be an official day of mourning for all citizens of the Republic. Forgive me for asking, but what was the significance of the ship? Who was on board? Sorry to be the bearer of such bad news. I know you met him on your first visit, and I know he spoke highly of you, as many do. The ship which we've just lost was captained by Commander Varik. The man who discovered new Romulus. Wasn't Commander Vorek your guide on new Romulus? Yes. Being given a tour of the planet by the man who discovered it really was the highlight of our visit. He really loved that planet. He was a natural explorer. He didn't deserve to die like this. I want to understand what happened. What do we know? The Tydra was a Lenora-class scout ship. Why were they all the way out here, in such an outdated ship? The Republic has most of its capital ships stationed in both the Dyson spheres, or protecting its assets from what's left of the Empire. They're pressing older craft back into service out of necessity. Have you located the data recorder? I've performed several broad and focused EM scans, but nothing's shown up. Given the environmental conditions, I'm not surprised. The flight recorder on most Romulan ships will eject immediately prior to a catastrophic incident. We really need to find it. I'll take a run about deeper into the asteroid field. Then I'm coming too. You'll need someone to help navigate the graphometric distortions. This is against regulation. If anyone goes, it should be me. Run about Argyle, you're cleared for launch.
question. If the ship was lost in a plasma explosion, why is an intact body so close to the debris? That's a good point. Don't know why I didn't notice this before, but that Romulan isn't organic. An android. Possibly. If it can be repaired, we might very well have a survivor. It isn't Federation property though. I know there are allies, but according to Regulation 264, we'll have to wait until the Harfei arrives. Are you quite sure? As First Officer, I believe you have the authority to bring it aboard. I've got Starfleet Command on Security Channel Gamma. They're asking for the captain. Very good, Lieutenant. Please put it through to the ready room. Lock transporters on the android. And stand by for transport. You heard the EXO. We can't beam it aboard yet. Regulation 26, something. 264, but it doesn't apply here. I'm the highest ranking officer on board. I'll take full responsibility. Please beam the body to Med Bay 4, and ask Arwin and Gizmo to meet me in the infirmary. Did you just say, Arwin and Gizmo? Yes, Lieutenant. I'm a doctor, not a mechanic. I have a visual. All stop. Should I be concerned that the captain is not answering this call himself? Apologies, Admiral. Captain Holland's taken a runabout into the asteroid field. He hopes to locate the flight recorder. And may I correctly assume you quoted the relevant regulation? Yes, Admiral. I see. There are those here at Starfleet Command who are saying that the loss of the Romulan crew was avoidable. Are you one of them? We must consider the fact that there are few ships which can match the speed of an Aquarius-class escort. Permission to speak freely, Admiral. Permission granted. This is an outdated ship, with a crew who've been together for far too long. The number of unauthorized modifications made to this vessel, and the crew's casual attitude to protocol, are alarming to say the least. I accept your assessment of the situation, and I believe it to be an accurate one. But despite these shortcomings, they've achieved more than almost any other crew in Starfleet. It's my opinion that they achieve what they do, not in spite of this old ship, but because of it. The Horizon is as much a part of this crew as any of the many people who serve aboard it. And what of your own feelings of now being part of this crew? Assigning me as first officer has met with limited success. Begging the Admiral's pardon, but if there's an element holding them back, I don't believe it's the ship. I believe it's me. You were the top of your class. You were also the pride of Red Squadron. I had hoped that adding a first officer such as yourself would have a positive effect. I understand your frustration at the situation, but I also see your admiration for both ship and crew. The computer's still compiling the coding from the recorder. So far, the data seems to be intact. Very good. And it looks like you're using the free time to study the interplanetary composition. I was just taking a brief look at the system. Like most systems, the gas giant is the alpha planet. This one is migrating towards the star. It's already in the process of becoming a hot gas giant. So the storms are related to the migration? Yes. Its migration is creating a wake of intense magnetic eddies. As a result the whole system is in flux. Lee, what are you looking for?
Mr. Tong, can you explain these 40 crates, which do not appear on the inventory? Well, yes. They belong to me. And what do they contain? 4,000 standard issue hypo spray packs. I bought them from Admiral Edwards when we were at Deep Space 12. They'd overordered and they were close to expiring. What are you going to do with 4,000 hypo spray packs? I'm going to give them to Admiral Bryce at Starbase 6. The colony at Reva has been hit with the gone flu and they're not your supply ship for two weeks. We'll be docking there in two days and she's already agreed to give me three spare pattern buffers for them. And what are you going to do with three spare pattern buffers? Sell them for 2,000 bars of latinum each. I already have a buyer on Drazana who will take them when we arrive there next week. Most impressive. I'm curious, why did you join Starfleet? Everyone's gotta have a hobby. The flight recorder data download is complete. What does it show? In its final moments, two plasma infusers were overloading. Before I gave the order to shut one down. An intense gravimetric field would have affected their EPS, as it's been affecting ours. This is strange. Emergency power was being held back. For what reason? I'm not sure. Twelve seconds before the flight recorder was ejected, they ran the power through the transition module and the deflector. That's very interesting. This is curious. When they realized they were about to lose the ship, they changed course. They took a bearing deeper into the asteroid field. Lee, why do you think Datan called you personally? Vorek may have been the man who discovered their planet, but you're the one that saved it. The Republic means too much. I want to give them more than an apology. I need to give them something more than just that. I think Datan would be very sad to hear you say that. Run about Argyle to Horizon. Dale. Can you get me Arwen please? I'm sending her some data. Horizon here, it's coming through now Captain. You're worried Quinn is going to blame the age of the ship on our response time, aren't you? I know he thinks the Galaxy class is an outdated dinosaur. Arwen here, I'm looking at the data right now. Does the redistribution of auxiliary power look familiar? Yes, but the nearest planet is over 500 billion kilometers away. Even under favorable conditions, I couldn't transport someone that distance. It's impossible. Impossible? Even for you, Arwen? Yes. Even for me. And there are other reasons why that power would have been converted through a transition module. Besides, to aid in long-range transport, you need to have a good gravity well to help pull the confinement beam a little further. We're sitting right next to a gas giant. That's a pretty big gravity well. Exactly. It would pull the beam back not help extend it. I'm sure I'm missing something really obvious. I'm sorry, but it couldn't be used to extend the range. And according to the data, they only had 65 seconds, from breach notification, to explosion. You can do quite a lot in 65 seconds. But there's nowhere within transport to range. We were approaching from the other side of the system. And the gas giant was blocking their field of view. If it were us in their situation, we would have found a way. R1. Show me what effect the gas giant would have had on the confinement beam. Based on the location of the wreckage, and their course heading at the time, the beam would have bent, and curved like this. Interesting. But that still leads nowhere, and it could potentially cause the confinement beam to cross through the other asteroid field. So that's where we're going next. The turbo lift's voice activated. How does he keep finding his way up here? No one really knows. 
Leo's no moon cat though, that's for sure. I don't believe it. Mr. Martin, was I not clear enough about beaming the android aboard? Commander Scott said he would take full responsibility. I don't doubt it. But I said no, Commander Scott is the chief medical officer, I'm the executive officer, and I said not to beam it aboard, you should have ignored his request and referred him to me. Mr. Koros, you have the bridge. Acknowledged. How did it go? Let's just say there are conflicting opinions amongst our allies on a response to a potential Iconian invasion. Surely they must realize that a war is inevitable. The Iconians chose to reveal themselves for a reason. There's more. Quinn has again expressed concern over the horizon. He said that sending one of the most experienced crews in Starfleet on high-profile missions in a ship from the Roaring Sixties was becoming an embarrassment. It sounds like Quinn's obsession is becoming a problem. Sometimes I think he forgets my daughters on that ship. I doubt that. He probably thinks that you're best placed to influence the situation because of it. His plan is to break up the Horizon senior officers, and then decommission the ship, but that's not what's meant to happen. Everything that is to follow, revolves around Horizon and her crew. I had no idea maintaining the timeline was going to be this difficult. I wonder if it would be easier, if Quinn knew the truth as we both do. I don't believe so. The Iconians will soon arrive with their Herald fleets, and the battle for the Quadrant will begin. We must stand firm and be watchful. We are now the only ones that know what the future holds. If everyone plays their part, and history unfolds correctly, at least some of us will survive. I wish we could use your knowledge to prevent this war before it even begins. We can't change the timeline Jed. We'd risk losing the war, even with all the planets that will fall, the ships that will be lost, and the people that will lose their lives. It's a better future than the alternatives, believe me. We must protect the timeline at all costs. Arwen, would you give us both a moment please? Will you please stop pulling rank and undermining my authority on the bridge? Why did you beam the body aboard when it's against Starfleet protocol, and was against my specific orders? We violated a disaster site, for no good reason, we can't just beam foreign technology aboard. Excuse the interruption Lieutenant Commander, but my government has always been grateful for assistance from the horizon, and if it means anything. You have my personal gratitude as well. I didn't realize you were online. Yes, and almost fully functional now, thanks to the actions of your crew. He now remembers almost everything leading up to the breach. I think you really need to hear him out before the Harfei makes contact. Oxygen, nitrogen, water. This asteroid belt appears to be the shattered remains of what was once an M-class planet. With some of the debris acting as self-contained environments, 
Has this ever been observed before? Not to this extent. In theory the planet would have had an extensive underground ecosystem before its destruction. When it broke up, some of the caves must have remained intact. Amazing. Even after its destruction, some of the life still survived. Not the most hospitable environment though, is it? The ecosystem seems quite diverse. Most of the plant life appears to use bioluminescence to attract insects, but some use it as a form of defense. I'll keep my distance then. The life form readings we detected are coming from another cavern. Commander, we appear to have company. 